Hi there, I'm Ira Weinstein from Recon Research, and today we're talking about meeting room video conferencing for Microsoft resellers. Specifically, we're gonna talk about how new ways of working are bringing new revenue opportunities. Let's jump in. First, a few seconds about Recon Research. We are a research and advisory firm that takes a different approach. We are customer-based and we are experience-driven. So our agenda for today's session is going to be number one, why now? What makes video interesting today? What has changed? Number two, what's in it for me? What's in it for my company? And number three, how do we get started? So first topic, why now? And I'm gonna start off by talking about the power of video conferencing. And there's no better way to show that than to look at the adoption of Microsoft Teams in the last few years. So what you see on the chart here is how the number of users of Microsoft Teams started out at only 2 million users each day back in late 2017. If you look today, we are now at more than 115 million users each day on Microsoft Teams. In case you're wondering, that is a compound annual growth rate of more than 300%. And you can see in the chart right there on the right side, the impact that COVID-19 has had on the Microsoft Teams user list. So huge amount of growth here from 2 million to 115 million daily users. Now that is simply amazing. So let's jump into video specifically, and we're talking about video in today's hybrid work environment. Some people in the office, more people working from home. We see first, like we said a moment ago, more than 115 million daily active users in October 2020 for Teams. But look at WebEx, 590 million meeting participants in September 2020. And then looking at Zoom, 300 million daily meeting participants back in April. So that's months ago, it's grown since then. So what does this mean? A lot of people are using video. Now let's look at some survey data about video conferencing usage in the hybrid work environment. The Recon Research team surveyed more than 1,300 information workers who used to work in the office but are now working from home because of the COVID pandemic. What did we learn? Before the pandemic, these people were using video roughly two times a week. And by the way, many of them were not using video at all. Then we asked them during COVID, how much are you using video conferencing? What did we see? On average, these people are using video conferencing more than six times a week. So that's six meetings that are being conducted over video. That's almost three times as often as before COVID. Then we asked them the big question, once the pandemic ends and you're back to normal ways of working, how often do you expect to use video? And this is what we learned. They still expect to use video four times a week. So what does this mean? More video conferencing usage than ever before, and this usage will continue to be strong after the pandemic. That's a big deal. So let's continue with why now and go into how the video conferencing world has changed. Start here, video conferencing meeting rooms. These are those enterprise meeting rooms where people go to participate in video meetings. And first we see yesterday. These rooms were very formal, expensive. They were designed for VIPs only. Okay? They used custom design and a lot of technology. Now the system behind the scenes here was very complex. And there was even custom control programming to try to automate and simplify the usage of the system. Now, what you don't see here is the fact that the microphones on the table in this room are hardwired back to a mic mixer, which connects to DSPs and switching equipment and amplifiers and more. There are probably two or three full equipment racks driving this meeting room. Now, this is the video conferencing room of yesterday. So if you're a meeting room integrator, you're a channel partner looking to provide value and provide these kind of systems, what skills did you need to make this happen? First of all, you needed audio and video expertise. You needed knowledge of control systems and how to program these custom solutions. You needed to be trained and you needed to be certified. 
You know, you probably needed a fabrication shop where you took all this equipment and installed it into equipment racks and wired those racks. Then you needed trucks to deliver this equipment and these racks on site and an on-site installation team to put it in place. Needless to say, this is a lot of expertise, a lot of equipment, and a lot of cost to be able to provide this kind of value. So now let's look at video conferencing rooms today. What you're now seeing in the field are many more informal spaces. These rooms are designed for everybody to use. They typically use pre-configured solutions and bundles. They use technology that's easy to sell, easy to install, and is ready to be remotely monitored and managed. Now these solutions are designed for scale, large installs in many different locations, and they require little or no integration, little if any programming, and frankly, they're IT friendly. So if you look at it, today's meeting rooms are simple and easy. They're not the exception. These types of rooms are now the rule. Let me show you a few examples. What you see on screen here is an example of a basic meeting room where people get work done. This is a system here that's simple to sell, simple to install, and simple to use. And on top of that, the time to benefit, that means from unboxing the solution to first use, is measured in minutes and hours, not in days. Now this is a great example of keeping things simple and easy. Now here's another example of another basic, standard, commonly found meeting room, another space where people do their work. This is another simple installation that leverages an easy to sell, easy to install, and easy to use USB system. So now let's jump forward into what's in it for me, what's in it for my company. Number one, and perhaps most important, you can remain the primary contact for everything that is UC and Microsoft in the enterprise. So this we're talking about throughout the entire company, not just at the desk and not just in the cloud. Now you can get into the meeting room. Number two, this gives you the opportunity to add value for your users beyond the communications room and beyond the cloud. And more importantly, in places and spaces and locations where people see the technology, where users touch the technology, where users feel the power and impact of the technology. So greater visibility for you as an integrator, as a channel partner, and greater value for the users. The next reason or the next benefit here is these solutions address an important, growing, and a top of mind need for the users. Now certainly, everybody needs their UC tools to work well. But when they're in a meeting room, they need to collaborate. They need video, and it's critical for that task. Now you can be in the middle of this critical workflow that people are talking about, that people are thinking about, and using all the time. The next what's in it for my company is the ability to expand the scope of your partnership with Microsoft. So yes, we know you're already in the Microsoft software business. You're already selling Microsoft licenses. Now's a chance to expand what you offer and to bring Microsoft solutions into the meeting room. And quite frankly, this is an area that Microsoft's looking to penetrate further. Microsoft wants to own the meeting room and you can be a part of that effort. Next, what's in it for your company? Revenue. First as one-time revenue, you get to sell the hardware for the meeting room. That includes the PC running the applications and the AV technology. And then you get the professional services revenue as a part of the installation, the configuration, the handoff to the user. Great one-time revenue from an area you didn't touch before, meeting room video. Next, recurring revenue. Obviously, everybody's looking to increase recurring revenue. Well, meeting room video conferencing, and especially UC video conferencing, opens the door to a lot of different recurring revenue streams. First of all, each of these rooms needs a Microsoft Teams room license. Next, there are a lot of hardware as a service models where you can sell the entire solution for a single monthly fee. Now, as the scale of these deployments grows, our customers are looking for monitoring and management behind these solutions to keep them up and running. They're looking for help desk services. And then of course, 
If you don't want to provide these things yourself, you can always resell Microsoft's MTR premium service and let others deal with the support for these spaces. So lots of different recurring revenue opportunities. Next, how do we get started? How do we jump into the meeting room from the UC and from the Microsoft side? Number one, you need to spend a little bit of time learning about the types of solutions that are used in meeting rooms. What you see on the left here is what we call an all-in-one solution. These solutions sit in the front of the room, typically near the display, okay? and they're great for smaller rooms. Key benefit, no microphones on the table, a single device to install, and very cost-effective. But again, these are for smaller rooms. Now for larger rooms, we get into modular solutions that typically include some kind of control device on the table, microphones on the table, and then a camera system more toward the front of the room. Now these solutions are modular, they're a little more powerful, a little more expensive, but they're still USB AV devices. They still connect to a computer running the same Microsoft Teams Rooms app, so they're the same level of simplicity, no complexity here, it's what you do for a living. Just one is for a small room, and the other side of the solution is for larger rooms. So first, learn about the offerings. Number two, activate the partners you already work with. Companies like Logitech, companies like Microsoft, these companies have the tools, they have the support teams, they have the documentation, and they have the service offerings and the monitoring and management systems to drive these solutions in partnership with your company. So talk to these companies, learn what they have to offer and bring it to the table. Next, this is the time to reach out and open the UC meeting room discussion with your clients. Now remember, your customers are already spending money on their meeting rooms. They're already spending money on video conferencing. Your job here is to get them to spend that money with your company as you help them bring UC and specifically Microsoft UC into their meeting rooms. So this is your chance to increase your share of that wallet. Step four, and this is an interesting one. You should decide which areas you want to take care of yourself. You don't have to provide all the value. You don't have to be an expert in all areas. You choose where you want to add value. For example, maybe you do not want to resell the hardware. That's fine. Maybe you don't want to do the system installation. Maybe you don't want to do backend monitoring and management. Maybe you don't want to offer a turnkey service wrap or a hardware as a service offering. It's totally up to you. You can partner with other companies who bring these services and capabilities to the table. You pick what you're comfortable with. You pick what you want to do. You pick what works for your company and your organization. But there are partners out there you can work with and they're easy to find because they're working to get into the meeting room too. So now let's close this out. What have we learned? Number one, Microsoft Teams continues to grow in popularity and adoption. The numbers, quite frankly, are staggering. Number two, video conferencing usage has never been greater, and according to the users, they plan to continue using video more after the pandemic. So this is not a short-term bubble, this is a long-term change in user patterns. Number three, Big change here, video, and especially meeting room video, is no longer complicated. It's no longer an unreliable technology headache. Now it's simple, reliable, and best of all, it's IT friendly. We're using IT tools with backend monitoring and management capabilities. Next, you see in the meeting room is a device-centric, cloud-based volume opportunity. We're not talking five or 10 rooms for a company, we're talking dozens, hundreds, mass deployments, again, very IT friendly and IT centric. Next, IT service providers and channel partners are perfectly suited to address this marketplace. The complexities of yesterday that kept the IT folks out of the meeting room, that's from yesterday. Today, the solutions are well-designed, easy to install, easy to configure. Often they're auto-configuring. So this is exactly what you've been waiting for, the time to get into the meeting room. And finally, 
Meeting room video is an amazing door opener to other discussions, whether it's additional licenses, whether it's security, whether it's desktop support, whether it's environmental control, you name it, IoT. The meeting room starts off a lot of these discussions. So once you're in front of the users for their meetings, you can be in front of them and add other value. It's a great starting point. So in closing, this is a lot of change. The world has changed, how users work have changed, where users work has changed, and what they expect from their video conferencing and from their meeting rooms has changed tremendously. But I want to remind you, when you think about change, it's not about being the strongest or the smartest. It's not about being the big dog in the fight. This is about being adaptable to change, addressing those change, and embracing that change, bringing new things to the table and adding new value in a new way. That's the way to success in a changing environment. And everything's changing today. Our ask of you is get involved now. I want to thank you and have a great day.